Planets roll without aim, where they roll in their horror unheeded, without knowledge or luster or name. Mr. Blake, Mr. Blake, Robert Blake. He won't answer. We could see him from our window. Just sitting at his desk. He hasn't moved since morning. Stand aside, please, miss. Doctor. I'll get the light. What's that horrible smell? <gasps> What happened to him? By all that's holy. Those burns. Doctor, have you ever seen a victim of lightning strike before? Hmm, curious lightning, with the window unbroken. But he does bear the marks. The smell in here, it's overpowering. Come with me, miss. You don't need to see this. I'll have to contact the coroner's office. Blake, 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 whatever happened to you? My name is Blake, Robert Harrison Blake, of 620 East Knapp Street, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I am on this planet? I returned to Providence in the winter of 34. Having sent home for most of my books, I settled down to continue my writing and art. During that first winter, I produced some of my best-known short stories and painted several canvases. At sunset, I would often sit and gaze out at that shimmering spire-crowned mound in the distance. But of all of the objects on Federal Hill, a certain huge, dark church most fascinated me. As the months passed, I felt myself more and more obsessed with the forbidding structure. By the spring, I could no longer write, my thoughts solely on the church and its dark secrets. The urge to visit the abandoned church was too great to resist.
Auguri, il mio buon signore. Good day to you, my good man. I appear to be lost. Can you help me find a certain location? Yes, yes, of course. Oh, excellent. I'm seeking the great church that rests atop your federal hill. Could you direct me? Um, uh, sorry, sir. I am not understand. The church that towers this hill, surely you know of it. Well, just a moment ago you spoke perfect English. Adio, adio. I say, will you... Can... I beg your pardon. I'm looking... Excuse me, officer. Hmm. I wonder if you know anything about the building here. The church? I really don't have the time to discuss it. Please, please. I'm a writer and was hoping to use it in an upcoming story. Any insight you could give me would be most welcome. The local priest warns against discussing it. Really? Well, why would he do such a thing? He vows a monstrous evil once dwelt there and has left its mark. Whatever do you mean? It said an outlaw sect took over the place back in the old days. Called up some awful thing from the darkest gulf of night. They say it took a good priest to exercise what had come, though some hope that mere light could do it. Light? I'm not saying it's true, but there's something wrong there. Leave it well alone. Well, it, it's important for my research that I, I get to the bottom of Mark it. my words. Leave it be. But, but officer, I... Please, I'll... wonder...
Professor Enoch Bowen, home from Egypt, May 1844. By his old free will church in July. His archaeological work and studies in a cult well known founds Starry Wisdom Church, 1846. Three disappearances reported. First mention of Shining Trapezohedron. Seven disappearances, 1848. Stories of blood sacrifice begin. Father O'Malley tells of devil worship with box found in great Egyptian ruins says they call up something that can't exist in light. People say the shining trapezohedron shows them heaven and other worlds, and that the haunter in the dark tells them secrets in some way. Six more disappearances in 1876. Secret committee calls on Mayor Doyle for help. Action promised, February 1877. Church closes in April. Ghost stories begin around 1880. Try to ascertain truth of report that no human being has entered church since 1877. It was June when I finally conquered the cryptogram. I'm both awed and disconcerted by the results. I discovered reference to a haunter of the dark, awakened by gazing into the shining trapezohedron. And I fear it is summoned again by my own gaze and now desires to stalk abroad once more. But thankfully, the street lights form a bulwark which it cannot cross, for now. The shining orb appears to be a window, a wall of time and space. I have traced its history from the days it was fashioned on Dark Yellow, before ever it was brought to Earth by the Old Ones. Changing hands throughout centuries, passing from civilization to civilization, it was unearthed from an ancient windowless crypt built by Pharaoh Nephren Carr. Finally, Professor Enoch Bowen brought it to Federal Hill and the Starry Wisdom Church to curse mankind once more. I must banish what I have evoked by letting daylight into the hideous jutting spire. And yet at the same time, I feel an ever-growing fascination and morbid longing pervading even my dreams to gaze again upon the cosmic secrets of the Shining Orb. Oh, my lord, the lights!
fools. I must speak to someone in charge. Listen, you must not lose power. You do not know what is at stake. Hello? 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 It is calling to me. Lights still out. Must be five minutes now. Everything depends on lightning. The thing is taking hold of my mind. Trouble with memory. I see things I never knew before. Other worlds. Other galaxies. What am I afraid of? It is not an avatar of Naradhotep, who an antique and shadowy chem even took the form of man. I remember Yuggoth and the ultimate void of the black planets. The long, winging flight through the void cannot cross the universe of light. My name is Blake. Robert Harrison Blake of 620 East Knapp Street, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I am on this planet, planet Earth. Azatov, have mercy. I can see everything with a monstrous sense that is not sight. Sense of distance gone. Far is near and near is far. I'm mad or oh, going mad. I am it and it is I. I want to get out. Must get out. 
get out and unify the forces. It... it... it knows where I am. I... am... Robert... Blaine. But I see the tower in the dark. There is a monstrous odor. Senses transfigured. Boarding at the tower window, cracking and giving away. Yeah! I... I see it. Coming here. Elwyn. Titan Blue. Blackwing. Yog Sagat. Save me! given by several locals. It's my conclusion that Robert Harrison Blake died from electric shock, or nervous tension induced by electric shock. Electric shock? But what of the unbroken window? Nature has shown herself capable of many freakish performances, Dr. Dexter. And in conjunction with the obvious crazed state of mind Mr. Blake was in, it's not unreasonable to conclude a profound nervous shock derived from an electric discharge. Well, sir, I would have to disagree with your findings. My own conclusion is vastly different, and I intend to act on it.